Welcome to the Coronavirus Weekly Brief. We're your hosts. I'm David Sturman. And I'm Melissa Salik-Burke with New America. Here are the headlines you need to know. As of Monday morning, there have now been 3,773,260 coronavirus cases in the United States, and 140,534 people have died according to data from Johns Hopkins. Around 1,131,000 people have recovered. Worldwide, there have been more than 14,508,892 confirmed cases of coronavirus, with 606,206 deaths. According to an analysis by Reuters, the world coronavirus cases count passed 14 million on Friday, increasing by 1 million cases in only 100 hours. On Saturday, the World Health Organization reported the highest single-day increase of new global coronavirus cases at 259,848. According to the U.S. Bureau of Prisons counts, at least seven prisons in the BOP system have at least 100 inmates or more who have tested positive for the coronavirus. Four have 300 or more cases, and one has over 1,100. Coronavirus infections at Federal Correctional Institution at Seagoville, a federal prison in northern Texas, have increased to over 1,000 recently, and already one inmate has died. The facility only has 1,798 total inmates. The second and third highest outbreaks are in Butner Low Federal Correctional Institution in North Carolina, which has 1,109 inmates, and Elkton Federal Correctional Institution in Ohio, which has 2,212 inmates. Each of those prisons has over 300 current coronavirus cases, but Butner has over 320 recovered inmates, and Elkton has over 670 recovered inmates, according to Bureau of Prisons data. According to NBC News reports of the BOP data, Almost 3,600 federal prison inmates and over 300 staff have tested positive for the coronavirus across the country. Further, 97 inmates have died from COVID-19, as well as one staff member. Even as President Trump has resisted calls for a national mask mandate, Americans are increasingly moving towards adopting masking. In an interview with Fox News aired on Sunday, President Trump announced he would not pass the national mandate requiring masks to be worn in public, saying, quote, No, I want people to have a certain freedom, and I don't believe in that. No. Trump's announcement comes after Robert Redfield, director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Anthony Fauci, coronavirus task force member, and many other prominent public health experts have advised for masks to be worn in public. Not waiting for a federal mandate, the majority of states now require masks in public. Additionally, nine of the largest in-person retail companies now require masks, including Costco, Walmart, Kroger, CVS, Walgreens, and Target. A New York Times study found that around 80% of Americans say they frequently or always wear masks when near others. The Times also found that partisanship is the biggest indicator of masking with Republicans less likely to wear masks often. However, the data shows an increase in masking following increased coronavirus risk, which might lead to a greater willingness to wear masks among Republicans in the southern and western states. Currently, at least 39 states have some form of masking mandate in place. On June 18th, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration announced its Emergency Youth Authorization, or EUA, of Quest Diagnostics Coronavirus Test, quote, with pooled samples containing up to four individual swab specimens collected, unquote. According to the FDA press release, this is the first test given emergency use authorization for pooled collected samples. In response, FDA Commissioner Stephen Hahn said, quote, this EUA for sample pooling is an important step forward in getting more COVID-19 tests to more Americans more quickly while preserving testing supplies, unquote. Adding, Quote, sample pooling becomes especially important as infection rates decline and we begin testing larger portions of the population, unquote. The FDA noted that while there can be concerns regarding pool testing accuracy because it could be more difficult to detect positive, Quest data shows that the pool test is developed, quote, correctly identified all of the pooled samples that contained a positive sample, unquote. In recent weeks, almost a dozen prominent activists have been detained in India under sedition and anti-terrorism laws without access to justice due to coronavirus restrictions. Lawyers and activists say that the lockdown that has been put in place to curb coronavirus has also closed courts for weeks, making it difficult to impossible to file bail applications and preventing in-person private meetings between lawyers and their clients. 
Rights groups have claimed that the arrests of the activists and demonstrators have been arbitrary and used to quell any criticism of what some claim is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Hindu nationalist agenda that has led to sectarian violence and rioting before the pandemic struck. Large protests have erupted against governments across several countries after the coronavirus and the accompanying lockdown measures brought economic problems, corruption, and incompetence to light, reports CNN. In Israel, protesters demonstrated against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who is facing an ongoing trial on bribery and breach of trust charges and his handling of the pandemic. The country's cases rose rapidly in recent weeks, with up to 1,600 new cases a day. In Serbia, protests took over Belgrade last week after the government announced a plan to introduce the curfew in response to a dramatic surge in coronavirus cases. After two nights of rioting, the government gave up on the curfew and instead reimposed a ban on gatherings of more than 10 people and closed all hospitality and retail outlets between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. Some smaller protests and rallies continued in Belgrade and other cities as dissent over Serbia's president, Aleksandr Vujic. Hunger protests erupted in Lebanon in May, and protests have flared up in Bulgaria over allegations of corruption. To see our daily brief, go to the address in our show notes and follow us on Twitter at New America ISP. And tune in next Monday for our next episode.